Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel, Gav here, so thanks very much for joining me. Um, today on the agenda, I think I've slacked off for the past couple of weeks, obviously in lockdown. Um, I had other things to do, spend more time with the kids and stuff like that, which has always been good. But um, what I want to do today is I'm going to rehouse um, a few smaller ones, so some slings. Uh, but I'm going to show you what I like to rehouse them in, because if I put a little video at the corner there... Um, Exoterra, these sort of big enclosures are good. They're more, what I would say is they are good, but for more display purposes, they look good for people coming in, seeing your tarantula there, but they come with um, hazards and to certain species. Some are better in those Exoterras than others. If you've got adult species, they're good. Um, but any of you that follow my channel, you'll see that on some species i'll put small slings into bigger enclosures because of the particular type of species just so i don't have to rehouse them such as the hapapalma lividum cold bloat blue cold bloat blue and also some syropagopus um, species as well i normally do the same with those just so it's less stress to them stops them getting um so defensive all the time and it's easier for me um, <clears throat> but then you have the problem of water dishes because if they're too small you use too big ones then they can drown in it so it's a constant misting but what I like to do is I'm going to show you in this video I'm going to rehouse a few but like I've got tubs like this which I'm going to drill over in a minute and if I've got two species the same I can put them in there and then monitor them together watch them grow and they're easy to keep an eye on and the reason why I like doing this sort of stuff is because it's quite shallow but it's plenty enough for certain species terrestrial species then I'm going to do some in these as well. I think I've got some horn baboons. I think I've got two different types going in a couple of these. And I'll show you as I go through. So it's going to be about four or five, maybe even more rehoused than it today. But these ones here, and I'll do larger tubs like this as well. Because um, technically, they don't need massive exoterra um, enclosures. Because they can climb up the side, climb on the top. You have to take off the mesh and put in some perspex, which I've done in a few of mine. But these, when you get some bigger tubs, and one like this, which I think I'm gonna put a small cold but blue into that one today as well. Um, they're just perfect. You can see through them all, but it's just um, minimal um, chance of injury to the actual species that you put in there. I know they don't look great for like, um, so I've got another cupboard there with them all in all stacked up. It doesn't look great to people that are coming in, but I'm doing it for the best chance and the best growth of my tarantulas. So I like to use different size tubs like also these here so i've got them in round and they are stackable as well with the lids on and then they've got the catches which locks into place so these are just absolutely brilliant so i'm going to do a few different sizes of these and rehouse them in um but like i say the, the exoterras i do use for the big my big ones as you saw in the clip before um but all medium to Juvenile stages, I'll quite happily put them in these, double sized ones, bigger liters, because it's just so much safer for them and they just feel a bit more contained. And I think that's why a lot of mine are calmer because there's not a lot of environment around for them. But obviously you need to make sure you give them space so they can stretch, they can molt and do the bits and pieces they need to do. But so I'm gonna crack on with this. So without further ado, I'm gonna drill some of these and then I don't know what I'm gonna put in, but we'll just see what we can do. So stay tuned. Okay, so Here's the little enclosure, quite simple. Um, I'm not putting a water dish in this one, so I'll just keep it moist every now and then in the corner. But this is the Hapacteria berviana, the Purcell's baboon. And I'm not sure how big this little guy is, so let's have a look. Hopefully he won't run out. Well, I'm probably going to have to cap it. There we go, so nicely done. That's quite easy on that one. Um, well, I hope that's going easy. 
but this is the Parcells Baboon. So this is the only one of this I've got in uh, my collection. But you can see the coloration now starting to come on. This is a quite a slow growing uh, spider, this one. I don't know if it's general to the species, but um, this one hardly ever eats, like literally once every few weeks. I need to try and see if I can up the game of this one. But now it's getting bigger, it should eat a little bit more. But you can see the difference in coloration on the legs. They're almost like a blue sort of coloration a blue sort of tinge there and then the gold and black uh, body but that is definitely a good little species looking forward to this one growing up let's see if we can rehouse it seems quite calm at the minute moving quite slowly Okay, so it's gone straight in. So that was nice and easy for that one. So these little containers be perfect for this one for the minute. So this one would do some webbing up, but I thought I'd give it a hide because it seems to just stay in one spot after it's webbed up. So absolutely beautiful that one. So let's crack on with the next one. Okay, so the next one is a Saratoga Sandari, and then maybe a Horned Baboon. And on this one, I'm not doing any too deep substrate on this one, so I'm just giving it a bit of space. Um, no hide in this one because it will web up and it use all the uh, leaves in there as well. So it's only a sling, um, but it looks a decent enough size. Um, so we'll see if we can get this one in. I might have to cup this one again as well and see where it is. Um, but yeah, let's crack on with this one. Take out the little water dish that can go in. All right, I can see he's right down there. So I'll see if I can move this out of the way, see if I can give you a shot of this. This one is very fast, so I'm gonna have to try and catch it. Okay, so there we have it. Different coloration on that one. It looks almost creamy yellow on the abdomen and then black everywhere else. But um, let's see if we can get a shot of the, there we go. That's definitely another. I think I've got one of these slightly bigger and it's almost gone like a, a grayish sort of color. So. Uh, very very excited about this as well so really looking forward to this one getting a bit bigger I'll put an adult picture up there so you can see what it looks like when it's older but let's see if we can get this one in without it running off so water dish in the corner I think I'll try and get it to come down in here So in again, nice and easy, no threat display or nothing. So I'll give you a good shot before he runs off. I think he's gonna come out. You see in. And there we go, so hidden down there, so there we have it. 
another little beautiful sling all in easy done it so that's uh two gone in straight away nice and easy so probably expecting to have a problem but i did expect one of these to run off the others that i've got to change i'm not too bothered with so nice and easy can you go in you go in so next is a nando caraparensis I think I'll put that one in here. Let's just do a label. Not expecting a problem with this one. Oh, here's a bit quick. Let's put the little water dish in. right he's actually looking more quicker than the other so let me just see if I can get him in here can see that there it's actually just done um, jet black at the minute but it's uh two and a half three centimeters so and i've had this one for absolutely months and months and it's took so long i think eight nine months and i had it at about uh it was actually smaller than a centimeter this one so um definitely very excited about this one growing um to maturity i'll put a picture up there to the left so you can see what it looks like when it's fully grown let's see if we can get this one in probably just run straight into the hide there so it looks almost freshly malted, but this one malted um, two and a half weeks ago. Um, again, another calm one, thought that was going to run off, but that's another beautiful specimen. So doing really, really well. So I think now the first time from under a centimetre, like 0.5, I think it was, it took some time with feeding these very small, um, <clears throat> what did I give it? Um, fruit flies, but even before that, I had to give it like springtails and things like that which it had in the soil and now it's at this size it will probably start growing at a rapid rate so uh happy with that one next i have this tub here which is an unknown species i'm thinking definitely brachypalma um even though this tub says brachypalma albopolossum this was a label from a previous one i had i got this one off i think out from alpha arachnids and was unsure what it was and it was absolutely tiny but now it's getting to grow on now so we'll have a look at it and we'll rehouse that one as well and I think you'll agree definite brachypalma not sure which one yet I uh, need it to grow a little bit more and then we can um, see that this one shouldn't be a problem to rehouse <coughs> he's hungry See if I can feed it first. It's taken it, so let's see if I can house it in. It's one of my old methods, uh, especially with um, the old worlds. Feed them, uh, they'll hold on to the prey item, then you can just gently tap them and they'll walk and they won't give up the prey item. So I normally like doing that, but this is Brachypalma. So I just thought I'd feed it and we'll just see if we can get this one in now.
nice and easy. There we go. So, if any of you would like to have a guess at what species this is, uh, please leave a comment below as well, just to let us know. But I definitely think Brachypelma. Still unsure as to which one at the minute, but if you want to leave a comment below, I'll be most uh, appreciated. Is that one done? Okay, and the last one here I'm going to change over is a P. Sasme. Had this from, well, I think this was 0.5 as well, so it's just started molting a couple of times. Getting a little bit more active, but I think anyone who has these know that when they get to a decent size, they can be a bit difficult to rehouse. So technically it can stay in this little container, but I don't like the lid because it just pops off and on. Um, so I'd rather just move it now before it does another molt and uh, then we can just uh, keep an eye on it from there. So I'm just gonna pop this one in and then I prefer to get it in a closure slightly bigger um, and then you can just leave them be. And that's where I find a lot of mine uh, stay a lot calmer. So let's do this one. For slings this size, I technically don't like using a water dish, but I will put one in there. All right, give it a shot of in there. I think I've had like two malts off this one, but uh, see if we can get it in then. It's got plenty of room to grow in that one. So there we have it, tiny little sling of these. I have had uh, these quite a few times from a really small sling, and they're just very, very particular. So I don't know if I had it too moist, and that's what was the problem, and I kept losing them as slings. So this one I've kept a lot drier with a water dish that I allowed to dry out, and then I retop it back up, and this one's doing fine. And it's got past the stage that I've uh, managed to get these past, but I think this one's two centimeters. So we'll get this in, and we'll see how that'll do in this little hole. So there he is, the P. Sazame. See if I'm saying that right. So I put a picture up there so you can see what it looks like as an adult. But that's uh, really, really um, a good tea to have. So I'm really, really happy with that one. So we'll leave that in there and we'll continue that one on the show. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So that's five rehouses for today. So I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one.